Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. This session is part one of a two part series that's going to cover electricians hand tools. So let's get right into it. To start with, we have to install a lot of fasteners. We have to tighten a lot of fasteners. We're going to use our standard tool with a little bit of a twist. We're going to use an insulated screwdriver as an electrician to work on tightening fasteners. The reason for this, the safety feature built into it and the insulated screwdriver is going to be that it has the handle and the shaft of the screwdriver is electrically insulated from the tip. The tip is metal, it's a hardened metal tip. The tips are no different than tips that would be on a regular screwdriver. The insulation is going to protect you, the user, in case you come in contact with live electricity with the tip of this, it's not going to send that current through your body. So these screwdrivers come in a different, uh, an array of different sizes and different driver types. We have here, uh, these are probably some of the most common, we've got a Phillips head driver, we've got a flathead driver, and we also have a square drive. And this square drive, if you look at the end of this tip here, uh, or it's giving you a diagram, it is going to fit into a square slot. And if you look at the other end of it, that is the square drive. This is a very common fastener I find in a lot of boxes, electrical boxes that need tightening. It might be a combination of a flathead and a square drive, but this is an electrician's uh, driver style. Next up, we have another type of screwdriver. We're gonna call this a nut driver. A lot of our fasteners are going to be hex head fasteners, and we have special screwdrivers for those. These have a socket end, it's a six-sided a hole in the end of the screwdriver, these are going to fit over a hex head screw and they're going to tighten this screw or it could be a bolt. We find these on a lot of parts uh, that are associated with electrical devices as well. As an electrician, we're always stripping and bending wires. This is a perfect tool to do that. And an electrician will have one of the others. This is pretty much the same tool. This is just a little smaller version. They're spring loaded, so they're always going to open up. And they have not only a cutting blade on the inside, but they also have small slots that are going to cut different gauge of wire. So let's see these at work. I've got a piece of wire here. And first of all, the cutters in the back of these pliers are very good at snipping wire. If we wanted to strip this insulation off, I know this is a 14 gauge wire and I'm going to line it up with my 14 gauge slots in this. I'm going to pull it down and then it, it's going to strip that wire very easily. It doesn't damage the copper conductor inside the insulation. Another job for these wire strippers is going to be bending wire. And the ends of these wire strippers are very small and they're very good for gripping wire. I can put that end on this wire and I can bend it in a very precise shape. So that is, this one tool will do three different jobs and often we're going to do those three jobs one after the other. So this is a very convenient tool without having to swap back and forth. If we need to twist wires together, the tips of these are not quite strong or broad enough to do that. These are good for single wire bending. I've got a better tool for multiple wire bending and for heavy duty cutting. That's gonna be our lineman's pliers. These are a very heavy duty plier and they have a very wide tip on the end of it. They have a very flat face on the inside and these will cut. These have a very strong hardened cutter on the inside of them. So if you need to twist several wires together or you need to cut a bundle of wires, this might be a better tool to use. So think of this as a heavier duty pair of pliers. Along the lines of cutting wire, I have a special tool that will do that. This is a pair of wire cutters. You might hear them called diagonal cutters or side cutters. And if you notice, they have a recess here. The cutting blades or edges are offset to one side. So we can cut something very close and flush with these side cutters if we turn them the right direction. So if we had something sticking out, 
we could cut very close into the surface by turning them in the right direction. I have a lot of leverage in these, and these can cut several conductors at one time as well. A very specialized type of plier you will find as an electrician is going to be a needle nose plier. These have very fine points, and this tool will work when no other will. It's very good, like our wire strippers, for bending wire and doing very fine work. If you can imagine all of the tricks you can do with those tiny little tips, they're going to grab really well, and they're going to allow us to do very fine work. Many needle nose pliers also have wire cutters built in to the back side of them as well. So they double as cutters and as very fine tipped pliers. One of the main jobs for an electrician is routing cable through a building. You're going to do that with a couple of important tools, one being a fish tape. This is a real, a very stiff steel tape or wire that is bent very, with a very special bend at the end. You can see it here on the presentation. This bend, you're going to take your wires and wrap them through here, twist them together, tape them off. Now you can pull that cable through the building. And this stiff wire is going to give you that strength that you can pull even maybe more than one cable at one time. This is a common thing to do and a steady job for an electrician. Another tool that an electrician would use to route cable would be a fish rod. These are fiberglass rods that are going to screw together on the ends and they're going to come in sections, maybe three feet, maybe four foot sections. And these fish rods are going to be stiffer than your fish tape. They're not going to have that curve that that reeled wire has. And you can run these through a straight run and keep connecting them to extend the reach of these. They're going to have special ends on them as well that will help connect a cable to then pull them through. An electrician not only has to install circuits, they also have to test them. A digital multimeter is going to be a type of a tool that an electrician will use to test circuits. You can problem solve with this tool, diagnose problems, or verify that the installation is correct. It has a number of different settings on it, and it also has a digital readout. These two probes are going to be attached to different places in the circuit. It's going to read the current in different ways to tell you if it has electricity, if it has resistance, if what amperage possibly is flowing through, what voltage is flowing through. So this is a multifunction tool that helps us test and diagnose circuits. You will see this tool again in one of your skills exercises to test a circuit that you're going to install. We have different types of testers for circuits, and this one is a quick plug-in type circuit. So if I have a duplex outlet, I can plug this in. It has three prongs. Uh, it, it, this requires a grounded outlet to test. But what it will do is it will light up these LEDs, and it will tell you the state of the circuit if that outlet is wired correctly, if you have the neutral in the right place, if you have the hot wired correctly, and if you have the ground in place and everything is making contact. So this is a very quick and convenient way. You plug it and you go and it will give you several different conditions. It will read each one in an instant. When you plug this circuit tester in, certain lights will light up and you can match this to your diagram here. It will tell you whether that wiring is correct or whether it's not, and it could even tell you what you needed to fix. So this is a very convenient, quick, and easy tool to use. Another type of tester you will see as an electrician is a proximity tester. This one is one that I always say you never completely trust it, but it, what it will do is to tell you that there are wires nearby this tip. So when you turn this tool on, it's going to look for electricity. It doesn't need to make contact with anything to sense electricity. This is great because you can tell if you're working in a box, you can tell if there is live electricity in it. It's, that's really good information to know if you're working in that box for your safety. But at the same time, it won't tell you which wire and I don't always consider these 100% uh, accurate. So it is a, we call it a proximity tester. It will check for electricity in a 
very small area, but remember until you make contact and get a reading, you can never completely verify that. A keyhole saw is a simple tool that cuts drywall and as electricians often need to cut drywall, they need to make adjustments before they can do their finish work, put cover plates on and make everything look good. If an electrician is doing work after a structure is finished, i.e. A, a remodel, they're going to have to cut access holes into the drywall to then fist and route the wires through that wall or space. This is the tool they might use to do that. This tool, it has a good sturdy handle on it and it has a very straight, uh, it's not a fine blade, very coarse blade. This used well can do a good job. If it's used poorly, it can make a huge mess. When you're using this tool, it has a very fine point on it. That can be pushed into the drywall. The drywall is very soft to get started. Then it has some pretty coarse teeth on it that can be used to cut very easily through that material. A hacksaw is a special tool that puts a blade under tension, and it's a special blade that's typically used to cut metal. I've seen hacksaws used for cutting just about everything, but this tool is very good for electricians to cut conduit. Conduit can be metal or plastic, and sometimes this might be the only tool to get the job done. I mentioned cutting conduit. If any wire is exposed outside of an enclosed wall or space, it's going to have to be covered in conduit. Electricians will run a lot of conduit, which is basically pipe or tube, to protect that wire. A tubing cutter is going to be a good tool, a quick tool to cut that conduit in a specific place. I pulled out of my kit, this is a plumbing tubing cutter. It's going to cut copper pipe. A tubing cutter that's going to cut conduit is going to have to be a little more heavy duty, a little bit larger, but it works in the same way. And the way they work is there's a hardened wheel and there's a couple of rollers and the round pipe's going to fit inside. You're going to tighten it up and spin this around the pipe. That's going to slowly push this wheel through that conduit to cut through it. If our conduit that we're cutting is plastic, we can always use a tool like this. This is a PVC cutter, also used by plumbers. And these tools, this is a ratcheting version, much more heavy duty ratcheting version. This is a simple single uh, pass version. Either one will, will cut PVC, and PVC is the material used for some outdoor conduit. So if you're having to cut conduit and you don't want to pull out a saw, this might be an easy way to get that done. Let's go through the difference between these two cutters really quick. Here you have a single action cutter and as I pull that handle, it's going to move that blade in one motion into that conduit. This cutter is going to, as I pull the handle, it's going to move the blade in increments and I've got a lot more leverage in this tool. So I'll be able to cut through larger pipe and more difficult materials with this version. A lot of conduit is metal and it can be bent. If you think about routing wires, the conduit is gonna to have to follow a lot of different directions. A conduit bender is a hand tool that's going to allow us to do this bend in the field. We can make precise angled bends with this tool and it can work with several different sizes of conduit. I can't think of any trade that doesn't use a hammer and an electrician is no exception. This is a 16 ounce finish hammer, would be very useful for an electrician to set boxes, to secure cable, uh, to drive staples, all of these kind of things. So this tool will be in every electrician's bag and will be very useful. Just like a hammer, an electrician needs a tape measure. We're constantly measuring our materials, measuring our space, and trying to make everything fit. Electrician does this all the time. A torpedo level is a tool you will find in an electrician's kit. Many of them are magnetic. They're very small. They're going to fit in our bag, and they will stick themselves to, say, a service box or a piece of conduit, and then we can figure out if that box is straight and level or even plumb. This one almost goes without saying, but often as electricians, we're working in a space that does not have power yet, which means that we're in the dark. So we need a light source to help us see what we're doing. We're also doing very fine and technical work. That could be a handheld flashlight or even a headlamp that we wear on our head. This is a very important tool to have in our bags. Let's do a review of these electrical hand tools. 
We're going to have our insulated screwdrivers. Remember, this is your safety feature. The tip is insulated from the handle. That's for your safety. We have nut drivers. These have a socket end and it will fit over six sided fasteners. Here's our wire strippers. These are going to do three things for us. They're going to bend wire at the tips. They're going to strip the wire of different gauges in the middle. And at the very back, we can actually cut wire with them. Here we have our diagonal cutters or our wire cutters. These are heavy duty cutters that are going to flush cut wire on one side, very tight to a surface. These are alignments pliers, very broad tipped pliers with a very flat face on the inside of them. They also have cutters. These do all of our work or heavy duty work when we're cutting and bending wire. Here we have needle nose pliers. These have a very pointed tip to them. They can do fine bending. They also have cutters built in. This is a fish tape, very stiff coiled wire. We're going to use this to route cable through a structure once we bore all of our holes. These are fish rods. These connect in segments or sections. They screw together and allow us to pull cable through shorter runs. This is a multimeter. This has a digital readout and is going to allow us to diagnose and test our circuits once they're installed. This is a circuit tester, a simple one we would plug into an outlet. It has LEDs that will light up when we plug it in to tell us if the installation is correct or what needs to be corrected in the circuit. This is a proximity tester. It will tell us that there is electricity nearby. It senses it with a tip without actually making contact. A conduit bender is a precision tool that we can bend angles into metal conduit. A keyhole saw is a tool to make adjustments in drywall in the finished stages of electrical work. A hacksaw can be used to cut multiple materials, including metals. A tubing cutter is good for cutting round conduit. That would be metal. This is a PVC cutter. That's good for cutting plastic conduit. A utility knife is a handy tool for cutting through cable jacket. A tape measure will help us measure our materials and our space for a good, accurate installation. A torpedo level will help us determine if a box or a device is level or plumb. A headlamp can help us see in a dark situation. This is a list of terms used when we're talking about electricity. And as always, I like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site, especially when we're talking about the skilled trades like electrical. So I hope you've learned something about all of these hand tools that you'll find in every electrician's bag. These are going to help us install circuits and deliver power to a structure. That's our job. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.